A new toy. <laughs> a new toy? It's not a toy. It's a tool. A really important tool that I really needed. It'll help me do stuff. What is it? It's a top down thermal imaging camera. I've been looking at FLIR thermal imaging cameras for over a year now, thinking, ah, I'd really like one of those. That would be really handy around the house. They can find all the places that I'm leaking energy from the house, that heat is leaking. I can check my consumer unit to make sure it's not going to burst into flames. I can check my batteries, check all the cables, make sure nothing's getting overly hot. Let's have a look inside. So why did I buy this? Because it's a fraction of the price and it should be better. It's significantly higher resolution. So how much did this cost me? It's on Amazon for about 270 pounds. But at the time I bought it, they had 40 pounds off. Comes in a nice little box. Got some instructions, nice little case. Whoa, tiny, shiny, nice. So first impressions are quite robust, quite good looking. Topped on. What else do you get in here? So we've got a cable, it's a USB-C cable. So you can plug this directly into the bottom of your phone or you can plug it into the cable and then you can plug this into your laptop or pull this off. You can plug it straight into the bottom of your phone so you can have it be more disconnected from your phone if you like. I guess it depends what you're gonna use it for. What do I need? I need a phone. Plug it in. I guess we'll put it this way around. So this is specifically a TC001. And if you search for Top Don in the Google Play Store, you get a specific app for this camera. So the app is called TC001. I should point out, this is currently only available for Android phones with a Type-C USB connector. It's not currently available with the iPhone connector. Apparently they might be remedying that, but no idea. So plugged it in, started the app, and we're cooking. Hello. Initial thoughts are the resolution is really quite impressive. So 256 by 192 high res, maybe for a thermal imaging camera. So just to be entirely clear, Top Don did not send me this. This is not sponsored in any way. I bought this with my own money from Amazon because I wanted it. Let's find out if it's any good several weeks later. It's been a few weeks now trying out the TC001, mostly just testing the use cases I think I have for it. I did initially have a problem where the camera seems to regularly disconnect from the app, but I tracked that down to fluff inside the USB-C port of my phone, and giving that a good clean out has completely resolved the problem. I've not been disappointed with this camera. The 256 by 192 resolution and the 50 millikelvin sensitivity has continued to impress throughout my testing. At this price point, and for my use cases around the house, I think it's excellent quality and reasonable value for money. For these examples, I've rigged up my phone with the top down and my normal Sony camera side by side so I can record the same footage with both cameras at the same time. Other than making a video like this, you'd probably never want to do that. The app does have the ability to do what it calls picture in picture, but it's really crap and not worth bothering with. The images are never really line up and the opaque overlay is just annoying noise. It also doesn't seem to be possible to take pictures or record video with the overlay switched on. Enabling the picture in picture mode just switches off whenever you try to record. I thought this was interesting. It's the back of my mostly solid brick walled house, but the single story extension on the left is a 1970s extension with a cavity wall that we had filled with polystyrene beads when we got our heat pump installed. You can clearly see on the camera that the filled cavity is colder, so leaking less heat 
than the original solid wall on the right. The window on the top left is also a new triple glazed window, which as expected looks to be much cooler than the other windows in the image, which are single glazed and we've not replaced yet because we're going to cover them with a future extension. One thing to remember with an infrared thermal imaging camera is that it works just like a normal camera when it comes to reflections. So trying to get a reading off of reflective surfaces like glass can be a bit of a pain. Checking a consumer unit is a great use for a thermal imaging camera. If any of the connections were showing as hotspots, then you'd want to check that they're properly terminated and at the correct torque before you potentially start a fire. It could be very dangerous. It's also very dangerous opening a consumer unit, so only do that if you know what you're doing. The camera interface has multiple color options to choose from. It doesn't really change anything from a practical sense, but it's nice to be able to use your preferred color scheme. Unfortunately, the app falls down here. If you select a color palette, there's no way to set it as your default. The app doesn't even remember the color when you leave the thermal imaging section and return without closing the app, which is very annoying. An immediate benefit of having a thermal imaging camera was to check my ceiling insulation. I've already found two places that I thought were insulated, but clearly have gaps. This section is in the 1970s extension. It's really hard to reach section of the roof where two external walls meet. I'm not sure how exactly I'm going to get in there to fix it. It's a very awkward space. This one is upstairs and was much easier to reach. I've already added some more insulation and fixed the issue. Finding this video interesting, it would be really great if you could take a second to mash the like button and leave a comment if there's anything you'd like to know about the camera that I don't cover in the video. Checking my batteries and inverter was another priority. Nothing appears to be particularly warm, but I did like how you can visualize the increasing amounts of current flowing through each of the battery connecting cables. Each link in the battery stack gets progressively hotter as it's required to carry the current from the preceding batteries. Something else I found a bit annoying is the white text that shows you the temperature points. It can be very hard to read. It depends on the color palette used and the color behind the text. But again, this should be easy for Top Down to fix in software. While we're talking about the temperature text, it's also really annoying when you rotate your phone, the text labels don't rotate. So if you have your phone in the landscape, you're still needing to read the text vertically. While using the camera, you'll notice the video appears to freeze for a second, about every 30 seconds. This freezing is the camera internally covering the lens to calibrate itself. It's particularly noticeable when making a YouTube video but if you're using it normally, I don't think it's going to be an issue. I did find an auto shutter option in the settings and turning this off seems to disable the behavior, but will reduce the accuracy of the temperature readings. Temperature accuracy is not something that's hugely important for my use cases. The difference in temperature is a lot more important, but for what it's worth, I did check the camera readings with an infrared thermometer and they were usually within about one degree C. If anything about the camera is a bit ropey, it's the app. All the important functionality is there and works, but it could do with a lot more polish. On opening the app, you're presented with a home screen with four sections. The first is titled Thermal Imaging, and clicking it opens the main camera functionality. So on the main camera screen, you can opt to record video and take still pictures. There are also four separate modes for showing temperature points. By default, this is in full screen mode, where it displays three temperature points, a central fixed point and a point on the coldest and hottest parts of the image. You also have dot mode where you still get that center point, but you can place up to three additional points on the screen to measure anywhere on the image. Line mode allows you to draw up to three lines on the screen and the hottest and coldest point on each of those lines will be shown. The final mode is plain mode, which allows you to select up to three areas on the screen and again, the hottest and coldest points in each of those areas will be shown. Also combine these different modes on the screen at the same time, but that gets very messy very quickly. This screen is also where the color palette options live and various settings. You can enable picture in picture, change the details, the contrast, the rotation options. The DIY option allows you to limit the temperature range that's displayed in the image. Anything outside the selected range is then shown as a solid color. I'm not really sure what the point of this is. The temperature points and scales still show 
the full range of temperatures not limited to what you've entered. I'm sure it's useful for something, but I'm not sure what. The last option here allows you to change the temperature range. The default is minus 20 degrees C to 150 degrees C. There's also a high temperature mode from 150 to 550 and a mode where it can auto recognize that it should be switching between the two. The next section is temperature monitoring. This allows you to use the camera to record a graph of temperatures. I only briefly tried this out and although I can see where it might be useful, the implementation is poor. There's no way to reference or find a monitoring session other than by time. When you go back to view the results, you need to know the time when the recording happened and only the graph is available. There's no video and there's no way to export any of the data. Maybe having the option to export a CSV or XLS would be a good idea. And how about having the option to name the recordings so that you can easily find them again. The next section is the gallery. It's self-explanatory. If you've recorded any images or videos, that's where you go to find them. Finally, Top Don has chosen to save all the recorded images and videos in the Android data folder. If you need to find them, you'll find them in this path here. On older versions of Android, you can use a file manager to access these files directly. But in Android 13, Google has locked down that folder and you're going to need an app like FE File Explorer to access them directly. I've found the easiest way and most reliable solution is to use the share option inside the app. I share them with Solid Explorer, which allows me to copy them elsewhere on my phone to be easily accessed. It's a bit of a pain, but it's not that bad. The last section is called Personal Details. It seems to be a bit of a catch-all area for some app settings, for the manual, the FAQ. Not really any personal details in there, so I don't know why they've called it that. Being the first thermal imaging camera I've owned, I have no point of reference, but for the use cases I have for the camera, I'm very happy with the results. I have no doubt it's going to be helpful going forward to reduce the heat loss around my home and troubleshoot issues with my heating system and with electrical systems. All the points I find about are software issues that will hopefully be fixed by Top Don and mostly don't interfere with the core camera functionality. If you're in the market for a thermal imaging camera, the TC001 is definitely worth considering. I'll leave an Amazon link for the camera in the description down below. If you found this video helpful, it would really mean a lot to me if you could mash that subscribe button. As a bonus, it will encourage YouTube to show you my future videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you next time.